You have called us to be light in darkness. Lord, you have called us to not be of the world, but to be in the world. You have prayed that we would be strengthened, that we would not be discouraged, that we would not give up. You prayed in, in that prayer, and we read in John's Gospel, the 17th chapter, that you would pray for the protection of your church yes, from the Lord. evil one, but yes, you called us, Lord, to be salt, yes, to I be do. light. Amen. So, Lord, help us as a church Hallelujah. to stand. <laughs> so that, Lord, when we've done all to stand, we can gird our 
yourself with the preparation of peace. That we can put on the helmet of salvation. We can put on the shoes of the gospel of peace. We can gird ourselves with integrity. We can take up the shield of faith. Hallelujah. We can take up the word of God. Hallelujah. So Lord, help us to be light in a very dark world. Yes. And help us to be light Hallelujah. where there's darkness Amen. in our church. Yes. Amen. For we ask this in Christ's yes, name. Jesus. Teach us to pray, Lord, Amen. this prayer in the living as we pray together. Our Father, who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Trust and obey. Of our faith. I, believe I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son and Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born on the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. 
From hence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the fruition of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. and our downs just like any family Lord but God I pray that you would just begin to bind our hearts together that you would help us to have one mind not ours but yours because you said in your word we can have the mind of Christ Amen. so Lord teach us in all things to surrender to you so that we can surrender our will and our pride and our way to one another. Lord, thank you for our church family. Thank you for the opportunity to pray for those we've called by name and many, Lord, we just name simply in our hearts. We ask, oh God, that you would move and do great and powerful things. We know, Lord, that you're able. We know, Lord, that there is nothing that you can't do except fail so thank you for your faithfulness to us yes lord and all things we give you thanks yes, and praise amen, amen.
as we sing. Jesus was a little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in His sight. Jesus was the little children of the world. Amen. If you would, which we can take. There is a right way in which we can go. And we can have a trust in a God that will lead us through some of the most difficult things we'll ever go through in our life. Amen. So today is a message to encourage me. I pray that it will encourage you as well. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge or trust him. And he will make your paths straight. Amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Sunday school as a child and maybe it's a life verse for you today. The text is strikingly, it, 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 the text is striking uh, in its simplicity. It is nothing difficult really about the text to understand as much as it is to live. Amen. It is so simple that it can be understood by the youngest believer and yet bring comfort to the oldest of saint of God. It is good for everyone also in between. These words cling to the soul because they speak, I believe, to a great need of all of us who feel that we in entirely, certainly, need guidance in our Amen. life. How many here need guidance in your life? Amen. All of us. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 suggest the basis of which that guidance will come. So the passage, I believe, is a short course in knowing God's will for my life. If you learn what this passage is teaching, if I learn what it's teaching, and I begin to apply it to my daily life. I believe I can make a profound difference when we need to make tough decisions in our life. The challenging aspect about picking the right paths in our lives is that the choices that we make now not only have an immediate consequence, but they also have ramifications far down the road yes. that we can't see or even yes. begin to fathom. I was thinking about this next illustration as I was thinking about my first cousin and I when we were just children. We would wonder, it's different in these days uh, as when, we, when I was eight, nine, 10 years old, mom and daddy would kick us out of the house and you couldn't come back until it was dinner time. <laughs> Go out in the woods, right? You know, uh, and so, <laughs> There was a railroad track that ran across my uncle's property almost, and there was a trussle, and over that trussle was a creek. And my cousin Teresa, who was a year older than I, spent many days swimming in that snake-infested creek, never thought about it. Oh, my. <laughs> 
We absolutely loved him. The little creek probably wasn't uh, 10 foot off of the water, but um, boy, we thought it was probably 100 foot high when you'd get out on the edge and jump into the water below. We would spend hours skipping stones, and I remember that song, country song, Skipping Stones by the Railroad Track. I love that song. The choices we make are like a rock thrown into a pond or a creek. Once the initial splash has happened, the pond changes and the ripples begin to take effect. And those ripples, they keep going and they keep going and they keep going. And those ripples affect every part of that pond. Some areas it affects right away. Other areas it affects later. Our choices in life or like that splash but that splash leaves ripples they have an immediate effect but those splash that splash leaves ripples that are far reaching far beyond what we can know or realize so let me ask you a question how do we learn and how are we to be sure that we're making the right decisions how are we and how can we be sure that we're making the right choices? Well, some might say, well, you know, I just sort of go on my good intentions. Because if I'm right or wrong, at least I have. Y'all don't look so holy at me. You know, you've used that argument so many times. Well, my intentions were right. Okay. Good intentions are good, but I don't think they're enough. And some might say, what if we just had all the information <laughs> that we could make the right choices, but then again, <laughs> you have all the information to still make the wrong choice. <laughs> so good intentions and right information, I don't think is enough. It's a good start, but what else is there? What are we missing? What can we learn? Well, for the next couple of weeks, if you would allow me to just lift up, I believe, a few life lessons for your consideration. Uh, and I'm sure uh, of the first life lesson, uh, you probably never thought about this. This has probably never come to your mind. But that's why you have me. <laughs> Hallelujah. So what I'm about to tell you, is just going to grip your imagination and you're going to say, wow. God bless our pastor. He is so real. Are you ready? The first lesson to learn, I learned from this passage of scripture. Are you ready? Choosing the Beth, Beth. Hello, Beth. <laughs> Choosing the best path begins with Perfect. God. Amen. Yes. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> I was waiting for a while. <laughs> Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. You see, our part is not to trust our hearts. Mm hmm our part is to trust our hearts to God. Amen. Did you hear that? Yes. There's a big difference. Pastor Andy Stanley, he is the son of Charles Stanley, who mm -hmm. I grew up listening to as a young pastor. I've copied many of his sermons down and quoted him many, many times. That's why I say listen a lot. If you listen to Charles Stanley, that's his favorite word. Listen, listen. So listen to his son summarize this passage, and I quote, What this verse actually asserts is that God will make the best path obvious. Hallelujah, yes. Hmm. If we trust with all our hearts, refuse to lean on our limited understanding, and submit every aspect of our mm -hmm. lives to Amen. God, the best path 
will become unmistakably clear. Yes, amen. I love that. That was so good. Best mm -hmm. definition I ever heard. I believe that's exactly what the wisdom writer is trying to convey to us. That's what it says. Now, let me tell you what I think this verse is not saying. What it's not saying is that if we trust God, he will straighten out whatever paths we choose. It's not saying that. But instead, that God will make the best path obvious to us. There's a huge difference, and we often miss it because we say, Lord, this is all I know to do, and I'm going to do it, and I'm just going to pray that you bless it. How many has ever prayed that prayer? Go ahead, raise your hand. Yes. I'm going to go ahead full steam, and if you don't want me to do that, you're just going to have to knock me down. Right? Stop me in my tracks. <laughs> and God is saying, I'm making the best path obvious. <laughs> hmm. Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived and who ever wrote uh, passages in Scripture, especially in Proverbs, is instructing us here to stop propping ourselves up with our own knowledge and insight but to lean into God. Now, I'm going to explain that in just a few moments. But here's what God is teaching me, and here's what I'm learning. And thank God that God puts into my life a helpmate to help me understand that sometimes I don't always get it right. Amen. And I, I know some of you women looked over at your helpmate. <laughs> And I'm going to say this on the men's behalf. You'll never get it right, but that's okay. Okay, you, I, I got a there, there, thumbs up on that. Okay. Uh, when Angie and I, and we have been, and we always do a lot, we, as husband and wife, discuss situations that arise in our families. I don't know about you. You may have a perfect family. We don't. Okay? Now, Angie and I and our children are perfect, but all the other family members around us. Are <laughs> I just want you to be clear on that, okay? Oh, my. <laughs> and so sometimes in relationships and family dynamics, things are done and things are said and things can't be taken back. And feelings are hurt. Can I get a witness in the house? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm, yes. And then there's the discussion that surrounds us as a church and our denomination. And if you listen to one side, one side will say, oh, you know, we, we just need to do this and we need to follow God and we need to do this and this is the way and this is how it needs to be done. And you listen to the other side and guess what you're going to hear? The same thing. Recently, my wife and I were having a discussion about how we would handle a particular family situation. And without hesitation, I said, well, I think we need to do so-and-so. Right? Because I'm the male in the family and uh, I have to fix everything for my wife and family because that's the role responsibility God's given me. <laughs> Your family is just like mine. That's wonderful. Yeah. Here's what my wife is teaching me. <laughs> Because it's what I understand of this scripture. And this is hard for her. But she said, I'm going to remain silent. <laughs> <laughs> I meant that with love. And she, that's hard for any of us to remain silent whenever yes, we uh -huh. feel as though. <clears throat> right? We've been wrong. Yes. 
because we want to make our peace. We want to explain to the other side how right we are and how wrong they are. Right? Now, I told you this sermon is just for me and not for you, but if it helps you, that's fine as well. Here's what my wife said. She said, I'm going to remain silent and I'm not going to move until God tells me. Hallelujah. To Glory to God. Yes. That's true. Trust in the Lord. Amen. Live all in your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. When the way we view things conflict with the way God views things, we need to lean into God's direction yes. rather than our own. Yes. But you know what we do so often because we're Americans and we're independent and we're used to living with freedoms and free will and we don't want people telling us what to do. It just immediately comes into our mind and right out our mouth and we just <laughs> let folks know what we're thinking at any given moment. Mm -hmm. We need to learn to lean into God rather than to our own understanding. When what makes sense to us doesn't line up with God's revealed will, we are to side with God and ignore what we feel in our gut. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now this is important. In spite of all you know and all that you have experienced, let's don't make the mistake of thinking that we're old enough and wise enough and smart enough and experienced enough or careful enough to be able to learn to lean as in our own trust and our own understanding because we I will agree. fail. Yes. Sometimes you must, uh, sometimes we might get it right, but the majority of the time we're going to get it wrong. In order to make the best decisions about the direction of our path, we need much more than information. We need much more than common sense. We need much more than listening to somebody else who wants to tell us what we need to do. Can I get an <laughs> amen in the house? We need more than the world's wisdom. We need more than our gut feeling. We need God, and we need to learn to lean into God and to not say anything until God tells us to move. Yes. Don't move. Be still. Remember, our part is not to trust our hearts. Our part is to trust God with our hearts. Well, pastor, you know, this is what I think about this. And pastor, this is how I feel about that. And I'm just saying, you know what? Let's don't go on what we think or what we feel because that can change as the weather changes. Mm -hmm. Instead, let's pray without ceasing. Amen. Let's seek God in this season of our life, in this season of our church. Yes. Let's keep knocking at the door yes. until God opens the door. Hallelujah. This is the direction you need to come. Amen. Glory to God. That's true. Because most often when I'm faced with difficult Amen. decisions, now that have consequences later, my first and immediate response is to lean on my own understanding. It just is. That's part of my fallen nature. Mm -hmm. Trust in the Lord of all your heart. Did you know that word trust in Hebrew means to lean fully with the body? Yes. Lean. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean to prop yourself up. Doesn't mean to just, you know, lean into like you're listening to, uh, what was that when E.F. Yeah. Hutton speaks? Yes, thank you, Jim. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just lean in and listen just a little. Okay, I heard enough. I don't like that part. That's not what it says. The Hebrew means to lay upon, to rest upon with your full weight. Rest. I wish Jonathan was here this morning. I was going to lean on him and ask him to hold me up and don't let me fall. <laughs> so I was going to fire him. But 
And I were thinking the word trust, and I were thinking the word trust means to rely upon or to have confidence in. But the Hebrew word is stronger than that understanding. It has the idea of stretching out yourself upon a bed or resting on a hard surface. You're just leaning into God full Hallelujah. weight. Amen. Wait. To trust in the Lord is to rest your whole weight upon Him, to depend upon Him completely. What tremendous benefits are available to us as a people of God and to as a church if we'll discover this. For the one that trusts in the Lord with all of their heart and does not lean on their own understanding, that the path for them to take will become obvious. Amen. He will miss this. It never said that it would become easy. Yes. But obvious. Trusting in the Lord is simply believing what God says. It is having faith in the incarnate word of God and trusting all that God has revealed to us in God's written word. The man or woman who trusts in the Lord is simply believing God in all things. Yes. Believing in his word. Trusting in his promises. And then not allowing ourselves to be shaken by circumstances by our sight, by our emotions, or by, by our yes. feelings. Yes, hallelujah. Scripture reminds us in the Old Testament, I love this Glory passage. To God. See if you can figure out what prophet said this. I'll ask you the question. Blessed is the one whose trust is in God alone. Yes. The eternal will be his confidence. Mm -hmm. Amen. He is like a tree planted by water sending out its roots beside the stream. It does not fear the heat nor even Hallelujah. drought. Its leaves stay green and its yes. fruit is dependable no matter what it faces. Flourishing in the house of God. You know who said that? Anybody? Hallelujah. Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Chapter 17. You see, Jeremiah was aware of the sins of Judah and the unfaithfulness of his people Israel. He understood that the Babylonians were going to come and conquer Culture, yes. and that they would be dispersed everywhere. Jeremiah was known as the weeping prophet because he, he, he was there warning Israel about their disobedience towards the Lord yes. that it would result in nations coming in and dispersing the people all throughout the land. Mm -hmm. He also warned Judah's final downfall and witnessed its devastating destruction. And he wept bitterly when he watched the presence of God withdraw from the temple of the Lord. Hallelujah. Nevertheless, there's a message of hope. Nevertheless, there's a promise of restoration. And it's here in Jeremiah's challenging message to Judah, God's people, a message of hope for all who would put their trust in God. It pleases the very heart of God when his children depend upon him utterly, believe mm -hmm. in his word thoroughly, and through faith with trust, lean into God Amen. so that God can make our past Yes. And repent. Without trust and faith, we're like ships without a rudder. And we're tossed to drift into the merciless sea of life. For the one who draws near to God must believe that God exists and that God is a rewarder yes, for I mean. those who diligently seek him. Proverbs remind us that the heart is twisted and perverse above all things. And when we view ourselves from our own distorted perspectives, we're too often led into error. Only the one that rests in the Lord. Amen. 
only the one who leans into God's wisdom and understanding. Yes. Only the one who trusts their lives into God's hand. Amen. Gaining their hope and their strength from the Lord. Only the one who places their trust in a God and God alone is the person that Jeremiah speaks of. One who is the man of the woman like a tree planted by the water. They spread out their roots towards yes. the stream. They don't fear what's going to happen. They don't fear the heat. They don't fear the drought. Why? Because their leaves stay green and their fruit is dependable yes. no matter what they face in life. Stay in God's presence. Now I said all of that to encourage me. Flourishing in the I house. I said of all of that to help me refocus. Hallelujah. I said all of that because I know the storms that await us as a people of God and as yes. a congregation. And I said all of that because I believe all of it to be true. I pray that God would help us determine what are the best paths in our individual lives as we lean into Him, as we yes. trust God with Amen. our heart, as we say nothing until God tells me to move. Yes, be still.